Alec Bohm to the rescue. Yo, what is going on everybody? Welcome to the Flitz Hot Stuff video cast and today we're going to be recapping the first game of the doubleheader against the Boston Red Sox as the Phillies defeated the Red Sox by a final score of 6-5 as they have a 4-1 lead at one point. They end up blowing it. Uh, they are losing 5-4 at one point and then Alec Bohm, clutch Alec Bohm with a two RBI single in the bottom of the seventh inning to give the Phillies a 6-5 win. Obviously, walk off in the bottom of the seventh inning. Very, very strange. Obviously, due to the seven inning doubleheaders, obviously, uh, which I'm still getting used to. Very, very strange. Uh, but I'm tired of the blown leads, ladies and gentlemen. We'll get into that a little bit later. Harper's slump continues. That has been brutal. Absolutely brutal to watch. Uh, but before we get into this video, please subscribe if you have not yet. Please turn the notification bell. Please like this video, comment on this video, share this video, and let's get into this. It's a nice, nice uh, way to uh, start off the doubleheader. You, you grab a W. Obviously, the second game is going on right now. We're not going to talk about that. We're going to make the video about that tomorrow morning. Obviously, this is a different story in the second game, but we're not going to talk about that right now. We're here to talk about the first game, which went very, very well from an offensive standpoint. Zach Eflin was on the mound for the Phils. I thought Pavetta was going game two for the Sox, but uh, obviously he was not because he was not the starter. But, uh, you know, good win here. I mean, good win here. Uh, you know, we got Didi Gregorius, uh, who's been heating up a little bit. Uh, you know, have himself a nice day at the plate. Alec Boom continues to rake. He comes through in the clutch. He comes through in the clutch, obviously, with that two RBI single to win us the game. So let's take a look at the scoring summary. Bottom of the second inning, as I said, Didi Gregorius hits his sixth home run of the season on a fly ball to right center field. It is now 1-0 Phillies. Didi Gregorius has been good for us this year at shortstop. We have him on a one-year deal. Hopefully, possibly, we could uh, sign him to a, you know maybe a two-year deal. Uh, we're going to let him get to free agency if we do do that. Uh, that would be nice. Obviously, the first priority is JT Remuto. There's no question about that. That is painfully obvious that the... the Priority is JT Remuto. We have to keep him. Uh, we have to choose him over every, anybody, obviously. Then Rafael Devers continues to hurt the Phillies. Top of the third, eighth home run of the season on a line drive to right field. Continues to absolutely kill the Phillies. He murders us, ladies and gentlemen. He murders us. And he wouldn't be done. We'll get into that a little bit later, but he would not be done. He is a Philly killer. But Bryce Harper, on third base, he takes advantage of a bad defensive play by the Red Sox. As Kristen Vasquez is behind the plate, uh, tries to throw behind the runner at third base. Sails way in the left field. Bryce Harper scores. Uh, you love to see that, man, on the opposing team. Man, what a joke that was for the Red Sox. Kristen Vasquez uh, totally botched that throw. And, boy, that was kind of funny. And the Phillies take a 2-1 lead. Then Alec Boehm singles on a ground ball to center field. Didi and Goslin score. And it is now a 4-1 Phillies lead. Let's go. We have a 4-1 lead. Bottom of the third inning. But of course, they chip back. The Red Sox. The top of the fifth inning. Alex Verdugo continues his success against the Phillies. His sixth of the season on a line drive to right field. A solo shot. And it's now a 4-2 ball game. And then Rafael Vezers does it again. I told you he was not done in this same inning. Second of the day, ninth of the season on a line drive to left center field. And it is now a 4-3 ball game. Then in the top of the sixth inning, Bobby Tebeck homers on a line drive to left center field. His fourth of the season. It's now a 4-4 ball game. All these home runs are all solo shots. We're allowing all these solo home runs. I just our, our pitching is atrocious. That was allowed by Tommy Hunter. Um, and, you know, obviously Eflin did allow those two home runs earlier. And then Raphael Devers just missed his third home run of the uh, game by a matter of inches as he hits his 11th double of the season on a fly ball to right field. Alex Verdugo scores. He thought he got it. He thought he got his third home run of the game. And the Red Sox take a 5-4 to four lead. But Alec Boom in the bottom of the seventh inning. With a clutch single, two RBI single that scores JT Remuto and Didi Gregorius. And the Phillies win 6-5. to five. 
Alec Bohm has been great since coming up to the big leagues. Um, he has been unbelievable. He's batted 298 since coming up to the big leagues as he has a three-hit day, four RBIs. Phillies Hots is player of the game in the first game of doubleheader. Alec Bohm, ladies and gentlemen, unbelievable. I love this kid, what he's been able to do. He's come up, has a lot of swag, uh, hitting the ball hard. He's really, really hit the ball hard. He's played a good third base. Um, he's been unbelievable. I mean, no wonder why this guy's our top prospect. No wonder why this guy's our top prospect. He is a future building block in the Philadelphia Phillies team. In this Philadelphia Phillies team. He is a future building block. I love this kid, what he brings to the table, his energy, his performance out in the field is unbelievable. Uh, you see what he's been able to do today, coming through in the clutch. And it's not like he's like Mr. Superhero. It's not like he's hitting all these home runs. and He's getting in the job done. He's doing the simple things right. You got runners in scoring position, you get him in any way you can. Whether that's a single, a double, or a home run would be great, but you don't need a home run. This is what these guys like Harper, Hoskins, and even JT need to understand. When there's a runner on base, you don't need to be Mr. Superhero. Just get the job done any way you can, whether that's a sack fly, a single, or even a double. I mean, it doesn't matter. If you hit a home run, great. Just get the job done any plain old way you need to do it. Get the job done. And Alec Bohm has been great since coming up to the big leagues. Uh, he has been fantastic. I'm so impressed with him, and he is definitely living up to the hype. I cannot wait to see what this guy will bring to the, this Phillies team in the future. Unbelievable. Bryce Harper gets to start in center field again for the first game. Uh, eventually switches over to right field. We'll talk about Harper a little bit later. Um, not doing so well, but we will get to him a little bit later. But Zach Eflin went five innings today. He allowed eight hits, three in runs, one walk in, six strikeouts. Okay. Obviously allowed those three home runs today. Um, you know, obviously allowed those back-to-back -back, uh, home runs for Dugo and uh, Rafael Devers. Uh, he was he's okay. He was okay. It wasn't great. You know, only five innings, you know, three run runs, six hits. Okay. You know, it's probably like he's he's a number four. I mean, he's I mean, he's he's a number three. But in any other any other rotation, he'd be a number four. He's not a number three. He doesn't pitch as well as a number three should. Uh, he's just not all that good, man. That's all there is to it. He's just okay, as I keep saying. He's mediocre. He's not that great. That's the kind of performance I guess Zach Eflin will give you. Not anything special. Not anything to write home about. Just okay. Not great. Uh, he doesn't have great stuff. We got him from the Jimmy Rollins deal back in 2014 from the L.A. Dodgers. Obviously, he was drafted by the San Diego Padres, but he has been just mediocre since coming up to the big leagues. He's shown some signs of being good. Uh, he has potential, I will say that, but he just he's too inconsistent. Tommy Hunter, who has been very, very hot of late, ran into some trouble today. He gave up that solo home run and then that uh, RBI double to Rafael Devers. Um, so he's been good as of late, struggled a little bit today. But you know what? We're all due for a bad performance. It's not the end of the world. I still have liked what I've seen out of Tommy Hunter this year. He's been very, very good for us out of the bullpen. Not not bothered by it, uh, not bothered by it at all. Not that big a deal. I still really, really like Tommy Hunter, what he's been able to do for, it, for us this year, especially at his age. He's worked hard. I will give him his credit. Because give credit where credit is due. I like Tommy Hunter. I think he's a good guy. And I think he's a good teammate. Uh, <laughs> Hector Neres got the win in this one. Uh, he was pretty good out of the pen. You know, striking the guy out, walking one. Only allowed one hit, pitched a, uh, one and a third. Um, but uh, Hector looked pretty good today. Obviously, he's been having a struggle season so far uh, out of the bullpen for the Phils. But that's your ball game, guys. Alec Bohm, clutch Alec Bohm. Now, let's talk about Bryce Harper. Bryce, 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 Bryce. He is in a big time funk right now, guys. Um, struggling very, very badly. And, you know, I was talking to Dylan today. And I want you all to listen to what he said. And this is, I'm going to read this a text. He said, at the close of play on August 22nd, Bryce Harper was hitting 343 with a 1.192 OPS, which is very, very good, obviously. It's fantastic. Since then, he is 7 for 47, 7 for 47 with zero home runs, just a 1XBH, and he's hitting 149, 149. And this has been, it's only been 14 games, as Dylan said, 
but it's all, it's roughly a fourth of our schedule, so it's 25% of our games. Bryce Harper has looked horrendous. He's looked horrendous. Do we not to mention grinding into a double play today? Not he's moping down the line. He wasn't even giving it his all. That's not Bryce Harper. Bryce Harper busts his butt every single time out of the batter's box. Something is wrong. Something is wrong. Bryce Harper busts his butt every single time. He could have been safe. He did not give it his all. But he's been hitting the ball hard a lot of these times. He's not really striking out that much. It's the weirdest slump I've ever I've ever seen. Like crushing the ball. Guy dives for it. You know that oh, that two uh, hits in Atlanta against the Atlanta Braves where Acuna dove out and caught the ball. Like he slammed his helmet down. Man, he was pissed. You know, like, I've never seen a guy, I mention this all the time, a guy who is the victim of so many good plays. Bryce Harper is struggling right now. We need, we do need to support him, but it is really, really bad for Bryce Harper right now. Very, very bad. He is in a very, very bad funk right now. He isn't hit a home run. I was on vacation in upstate New York last time he hit a home run. And that feels like forever ago. It's over two weeks ago. It's almost been three weeks. Three weeks. So it has been forever. Boy, oh boy, is he struggling. It, it's, it's hard to see it. I, I run a Harper fan page, man. Think about me. I have to go up there and update his stats every, after every single game. You don't, you don't think I see what his numbers are? I mean, he's struggling. He's in a slump, a very, very bad slump. And it's hard for a huge Harper fan to watch that. Harper's my favorite player. It, it's torture. I mean, it's awful, but, you know, I have to understand that we have other guys producing for us. You know, Alec Bohm has been great coming out of the big leagues. Reese Hoskins has turned it on a little bit. You know, not been as hot as of, you know, the past few games, but you know what? He's still been hitting the ball out of the ballpark. JT's been okay. He's a little bit cold. Kutch has, you know, turned it on. Another guy that's been a little bit cold recently, but he much better than he was at the beginning of the season. But I think the guy that's really impressed me is Alec Bohm. Alec Bohm, uh, he has been great. He is such a big part of our future. So, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you like what I said about Bryce Harper. I'm not worried about him. This is who the man is. I talked about this a lot last year. Harper is so streaky. He's probably the most streaky player in baseball. If he isn't, he's one of the most streaky players in baseball. I mean, he's so incredibly streaky. He, these are, he's either red hot or he's ice cold. There's no gray with Bryce. There's no gray with him. So, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Please subscribe if you have not yet. Please turn on the notification bell. Please like this video. Comment on this video. Share this video. Please subscribe. Tell your friends about these videos. Check out the social media link in the description section. At Felice House of Instagram. My heart for next Instagram. Uh, call or text 267-225-3392. Email me, philiesoshiv at gmail.com. Guys, thank you so much for watching this video. The second game of the doubleheader recap will be out tomorrow. The game just went final. I do not want to say what the score was. Uh, but uh, it was not the result that I was hoping for. I will say that. But Vin Velasquez was on the mound for the Phillies for the second game. But I will recap that tomorrow morning because I have a late arrival to school because I have a study hall and I just I get to show up when my class starts, which isn't until like nine, like ten a.m. So I have time to make the video tomorrow morning. So I'll see you guys tomorrow morning. Uh, and I'll talk to you later. See you guys.